So, in the last class we have seen uh, how to find out flux and we also talk about the Gauss law, right. So, till now we discuss Gauss theorem that closed surface integral of electric field over a Gaussian surface is 1 upon epsilon naught times the charge enclosed by the surface. So, mathematically that can be written close, close the circle right, close surface integral of electric field over Gaussian surface is charge enclosed by epsilon naught. So, in the last class we have seen that those charges which are inside they will only contribute to the Q enclosed while outside charges they would not contribute to flux. So, contribution is coming only contribution to the flux is only coming by charge enclosed inside the surface outside charges are not going to play any role in the flux. But when you are writing field here that is the field created by all the charges whether they are inside or outside. So, all these q 1, q 2, q 3, q 4 they will contribute the field here, but this side you have to just write charge enclosed by the surface. This whole quantity is representing flux, flux bounded by a closed Gaussian surface, right. There is another format of Gauss law which is called differential format that is del dot E is equal to rho upon epsilon naught. This is del operator. You need not to worry about what is del operator and all. You can also remember the whole expression this way, right. So, this del operator, this del operator is I plus So, this vector, this vector you have to do dot product with the field in vector form. So, I have written this one over here, then you do dot product and you will get rho upon epsilon naught volume charge density. So, here rho is volume charge density. So, you can uh, remember Gauss law this way or you can remember Gauss law this way. This is integral format and this is differential format, right. Now, so let us talk about the basic property what we have learned. First point is the flux through Gaussian surface is independent of shape, right. This is the first property. So, no matter how you are drawing surface, how you are drawing surface, whether you are enclosing charge by this surface or you enclose charge by this surface in both the cases the flux associated will be same. So, independent of the shape of the surface you are going to get flux associated same as long as surface is fully enclosing the charge. So, first point is clear. Let us see next one. The flux through Gaussian surface depends only on the charge present inside the Gaussian surface. So, here I keep q 1, here I keep q 2 and the our Gaussian surface is enclosing q 1 then the flux associated just depends on q 1. We have seen that flux comes q 1 divided by epsilon naught. So, the flux crossing the imaginary surface just depends on charge residing inside the Gaussian surface. Because due to outside charge we have seen that flux will get cancelled out. Here it will contribute to negative flux and here it will contribute to positive flux. These two when you add 
will give you 0, right. So, flux will be only due to charge present inside the Gaussian surface. The next point, flux through Gaussian surface is independent of the position of the charges inside the Gaussian surface. So, this is same as the first one, right. So, if I have this Gaussian surface, no matter whether I have charge somewhere here or I have charge somewhere here, in both the cases as long as charge is fully covered by the surface the flux associated will always come. So, orientation of charge inside the Gaussian surface is immaterial. Anywhere you place the charge inside, the flux passing through the surface will always come Q upon epsilon naught. This is third point. Now, fourth one. electric field intensity at the Gaussian surface is due to all the charges present inside as well as outside. We have al already seen this point. So, if I take this Gaussian surface and I keep one charge over here and another charge outside, then field at any point on the Gaussian surface is because of the outside charge as well as inside charge. So, this is the field created by second charge, I will write it E 2 and this is the field created by first charge, I will write E 1. So, these two charges together will produce field at any point on the Gaussian surface. So, similarly, if we have n charges out of n charges, m charges are inside and remaining n minus m outside, then all the charges will produce field at every point on the Gaussian surface, right. So, electric field intensity at the Gaussian surface electric field intensity at the Gaussian surface is because of the charge inside as well as outside. This is last point. So, these points are clear. Let us see remaining point. For a closed surface incoming flux is taken negative while outgoing flux is taken positive. We have already discussed this point because for any closed surface you are defining area vector outward direction. So, if I place some charge here and field lines will be like this, then any positive charge I keep, right. So, field lines will be like this, you can see that flux is going out. At every point, area vector is making less than 90 degree with a field vector and the total flux associated will come positive in this case. So, flux associated will come positive in this case. But what if I place a negative charge? So, when a negative charge is enclosed by the surface, then field lines will be towards the charge. So, field lines will be towards the charge like this. As you are defining area vector this way, you can see that angle made by field and area vector is greater than 90 degree for all the point, for all the point, the flux in this case will come negative. So, the for, for a closed surface incoming flux is taken negative while outgoing flux is taken positive. Outgoing flux comes positive because of angle made by field with the area vector. Similarly, for negative it will be negative, right. For a Gaussian surface phi is equal to 0 does not imply that E is equal to 0, but E is equal to 0 imply that phi is equal to 0. For example, if I take plus and minus charge right or dipole. If I take dipole and I enclose it by Gaussian surface, then at this point if I ask what is the direction of field. So, because of this positive it will be in this direction and because of this negative it will be in this direction. Obviously, net field is coming on every element on the Gaussian surface. But if you calculate flux, flux is charge inside upon epsilon naught as we are getting positive charge and we are getting negative charge. So, total charge enclosed by the surface 
plus q plus minus q this is minus q charge so when you add these two it will become zero so flux associated is coming zero flux associated is coming zero but field is not coming zero so here you are getting field something like this and field is not zero so total flux associated with surface if it is zero it does not imply that field is zero right if field is zero everywhere if field is zero everywhere if field is zero everywhere that definitely implies that flux associated will be zero so visualize the situation that at every point on the gaussian surface i am getting field zero assume so e dot ds close surface integral is charge inside upon epsilon not if everywhere field is zero then i can definitely say everywhere on gaussian surface field is zero then i can definitely say that charge enclosed is zero right this is the net charge and the flux associated i can say this is nothing but flux flux associated i can say zero right so there won't be any net charge that i can say definitely and there won't be any flux passing through gaussian surface that definitely i can say right so these six points clear now let's understand those points so if i place a negative charge you can see that area vector in this direction and and field lines will be towards the charge so in this case if i ask what is the flux associated if charge is placed at the center i can write e dot da right that means i can write mod e mod da cos area vector and field both are in opposite direction angle between them is 180 degree right due to charge at every point field intensity is same so this quantity is same everywhere i can write kq divided by r square this whole thing is constant because we are writing magnitude da cos 180 is minus right so this is the flux associated with a small element that i need to integrate to get the total flux so to get total flux what i'll do i'll integrate so you can see as all are constant i can take these constant out and i just need to integrate area that surface area of sphere is 4 pi r square so i can write minus kq divided by r square into 4 pi r square right so minus this k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not so 4 pi 4 pi gets cancel out epsilon not i can see rr gets cancel out so we are getting q upon epsilon not flux right so the situation is clear field lines are getting into the surface we are getting negative flux now let's take one more example so i have considered few surfaces so that you you will be having clarity let's call this surface this blue one let's call this as s1 this uh, red one or orange one i can call s2 this yellow one i can call s3 and this outermost i can call s4 right so if i ask what is the flux associated with s1 flux associated with s1 surface 1 so surface 1 is just enclosing just enclosing this minus q so i can write minus q upon epsilon not so i have taken dipole and different different surfaces so that you will be having idea how to write the flux similarly flux associated with s2 look at this orange one orange one inside orange one charges q and flux is associated due to inside charge only so because of this one i write 
flux associated plus q divided by epsilon naught. Now flux associated with surface 3, look at the surface 3, yellow one. The number of line entering into is equal to number of line leaving that I can see from diagram itself and I can see there is no charge enclosed by this yellow surface. As there is no charge enclosed by yellow surface, charge enclosed is 0 divided by epsilon naught, you are getting flux associated 0, right. Whatever gets in, same thing comes out, so total become 0. Now let us take fourth one, flux associated with fourth one. Now this fourth one, how much charge it is enclosing? You can see minus q here and plus q here, charge enclosed by fourth one. So if you write total charge inside plus plus minus q divided by epsilon naught, this quantity is coming 0. So there is no flux associated with, there is no net flux associated with four surface. And you can see that whatever line originating from here, they are contributing to positive flux this side and they are taking turn and they are contributing negative flux this side. So positive and negative they are getting cancelled out. So for whole surface, we are getting total flux associated exactly 0, right. Now let us take a few examples. So we have got hemisphere, this is three dimensional diagram, uh, let us see 2D. So diagram is this way in two dimension. Question is how much is flux associated with this curved surface and how much is the flux associated with flat surface. If you look at the way there will be field in a space, the lines will be coming from the surface like this, sorry from charge like this. As there is no line which is cutting this surface, so flux associated with the bottom part, flux associated with this bottom part is 0. So there is no flux associated as there is no line crossing it. I hope you can visualize if I place a charge, field lines will be radially outward, right. So if I cut the charge half, if I cut the charge exactly half, then the lines above that plane will be this way and below the plane it will be this way. So no line will be crossing this imaginary surface. So the flux associated with this flat surface will be 0. So flux here will be 0. And if I ask how much is the flux associated with this one, I can use Gauss law, I can see the closed surface over here and which is enclosing half of the charge. So this surface is enclosing half of the charge, total charge is Q, only half part is inside the surface, inside this closed surface. So half part will be inside this hemispherical closed surface and according to Gauss law total flux is whatever be the charge inside upon epsilon naught and we are getting charge inside is Q by 2 upon epsilon naught and total flux is what? flux due to flat surface, flat surface plus flux due to curved surface. But there are two types of surfaces, one is flat, another is curved. As we have seen that the flux through flat surface is 0. So this quantity will come 0 and flux through curved surface is Q upon 2 epsilon naught. So these lines, you can see that the lines on this side, they only cross the surface and they will contribute to the flux, 
right so flux associated is q upon 2 epsilon naught or i can solve this problem by another way i can use the concept of uh, or i can use the formula for flux right so look at the every point on the surface field is same right magnitude of field is same q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r square what is the surface area of this one that is 2 pi r square if i multiply i will get q upon 2 epsilon naught so using basic formula for flux you can find out the flux associated with this surface or you can use gauss law to get the result right let's see another example so i am placing a charge on the edge of the cube and exactly at the middle and i am asking how much is the flux associated with this cube i am asking how much is the flux associated with this cube so what we can do uh, if i place four cubes in such a way so that they all cover four identical cubes in such a way so that they all cover this charge so number of such cube required will be four this way so i have placed the charge somewhere here so i hope you can easily see the diagram so this 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 cube is this one this cube is this one right so i need to place sorry this cube is let me just correct the diagram so charge is placed here this cube is here so over this cube i have to place identical cube above it then back side will be exposed so to cover back side one i have to place two similar cube i have to place two similar cube you can see this cube and this cube then only this can be covered so that means this q charge is shared by four identical cubes every cube will get a part q by 4 so this cube will get only part of this charge it is in three dimension you have to visualize it the part this is going to get is only q by 4 out of the total charge which will be shared by all uh, four so if i ask how much is the flux associated with this one there is a charge enclosed by this surface divided by epsilon not will give you flux so the flux associated will be q upon 4 pi epsilon not right now let's take uh, one more similar problem now instead of placing the charge at the center of the edge i am placing at the corner so charge is placed at the corner and i am asking how much is the flux associated with the cube first question and second question how much is the flux associated with this surface so let's first find out first part how much is the flux associated with the cube so to cover this one to cover the corner i need eight such cubes four at the bottom and four and three at the side along with this one so all together eight cubes are required let's see the diagram so this cube is here right now i hope you can understand the diagram this cube is this one this cube is this one okay i'll now i can easily visualize okay so this cube is here to cover the charge at, charge at the corner charge at the corner you have to place one cube 
beside this one, two cubes behind this one and to cover the remaining exposed part you have to place four cube below this arrangement. So, all together eight cubes will completely cover this charge. So, every every cube is getting only q by 8 part. So, if I ask what is the flux associated with q charge enclosed that is q by 8 divided by epsilon naught will give you flux passing through q. Now, the question is how much is the flux passing through this surface? Now, you have to visualize little more. So, I am asking flux associated with this one. Okay. Now, look at this one, this surface, then this surface which are passing through the charge. I hope you can easily see what I am drawing, right. So, the back one passes through charge, the side one passing through charge and the bottom one passing through charge. When surface passes through charge just now we have seen when surface passes through charge because of the charge field lines will be like this. So, no field line crosses the surface. So, this is the surface I am drawing. Let's draw it this way. So, this is our surface. If charge is on the surface, I am taking a considerable size charged body, right. So, if the surface is exactly passing through it like this, then there is no flux associated. So, flux associated with this surface, flux associated with this surface will be 0, right. Flux associated with this surface, this is 0 and the flux associated with this one look at this again it is passing through charge. So, flux associated with this one will be 0. For the remaining 3 the top one front one and the side one top one front one and the side one this charge is placed the same way the top one and the side one and and top over side over sorry top over front over side one this one the charge is placed in the similar way if you can rotate the cube then this front one will take side of the top one or top one can easily take side of side one. So, the flux associated with the remaining faces this one this one this one they all will be same. So, this much amount of flux will get divided into three parts. This one will get divided into three parts. So, if I ask how much is the flux passing through these surfaces, then these three surfaces flux is 0 remaining 3 surfaces flux is passing and that will be the flux. Through any of the surface how much is the flux? Any of the surface for example, I am asking how much is the flux associated with this surface right. So, this is one third of this q by 8 epsilon naught divide by 3 because it is getting equally divided into <coughs> 3 parts. So, we are getting q upon 24 epsilon naught right. So, example is clear let us see another one. Now, above plate I am placing 
a charge q the dimension of plate is a by a and we are placing charge at a by 2 this way and i am asking how much is the flux associated with this plate <coughs> so flux associated with this plate i want So what I can do, I can uh, cover the charge from all the sides so that I can use Gauss law and uh, if I want to cover, I have to place one wall over here, another wall this side, one wall here, one wall here and from top, I have to keep a ceiling of dimension A by A, right. So diagram will look something like this. So I have covered it by remaining. 5 volts. So now it is completely closed. If it is completely closed, the total flux associated, I can write total flux associated that is Q upon epsilon naught. As it is placed symmetrically at the center of the cube, it is placed at its place symmetrically, this flux will get divided into 6 equal parts. So the flux passing through any of the face, whether this face, this face, bottom one and the top one, any of the face if I ask, then this Q upon 6 epsilon naught. So the flux associated with this surface is Q by 6 epsilon naught. Now let us take another example. So now I have taken cylinder and I am completely closing the charge and it is placed exactly at the mid. So if this distance is L and the charge is placed exactly at the middle, so this distance is L by 2 and charge is Q. Question is how much is the flux associated with this curved surface? So if I solve or I try to solve this problem using the flux formula, then what I need to do, I need to consider ring over here, right. First, I need to find out how much is the flux associated with this elemental part and then I need to integrate to get the flux associated with this curved surface of the cylinder, right. Or I can easily solve this problem using the result what we already derived. So, if you remember because of the charge because of this charge flux passing through ring which is placed at distance x that formula came q q was the charge q upon 2 epsilon naught 1 minus cos theta or q upon 2 epsilon naught 1 minus x divided by under root x square plus r square. So I can directly use this result in combination with the Gauss law. I will easily get the answer in one step. So how much is the flux associated with this one if I ask? Let us call it surface 1 or surface 2 let us call it flux passing through this one is phi 3 and the flux passing through this one is phi 1, right. And this is the formula we are going to use. So phi 1 and phi 3, I can directly write phi 1. Look at the diagram. Now look at the diagram. This is the formula we are going to plug in the values. So I will erase it. So if you are comfortable with this one, substitute these values, right or you can remember in this format, I already told you that it is easy to remember this format q upon 2 epsilon naught 1 minus cos theta, right. Or x divided by under root x square plus r square where x is the distance of charge from the center of this ring or you can say disc, right. So, <coughs>
this is the formula we need to apply flux 2 is same as flux 3 and the value is q upon 2 epsilon naught in bracket 1 minus x. You can see from charge to center distance is L by 2. So, I can write L by 2 over here divided by under root again L by 2 whole square plus R square right. So, this is flux 1 and flux 2. How much is the flux associated with this one? I can write flux 1 plus flux 2 plus flux 3 is charge enclosed upon epsilon naught Gauss law. So, these all three surfaces, these two flat and this curve, they together will enclose this much flux, right. Out of these three, we know the value of phi 2 and phi 3. From here, I can substitute phi 2, phi 3. So, substitute phi 2, phi 3 and place it on the other side, you will get the value of phi 1. So, you can easily uh, calculate the flux associated with this curve part using the result what you have already derived plus this Gauss law. So, application of Gauss law and the flux, these points are clear. Let us move to next one. So, now let us see some other application. We already know how much is the uh, electric field at this point. If this is a positive charge, solid sphere where charge is uniformly distributed. So, charge is uniformly distributed. So, charge is uniformly distributed over a sphere and I want to find out the field at this particular point. So, according to Gauss law, E dot ds close is equal to charge inside upon epsilon naught. Let the radius of a sphere be capital R and volume charge density is rho, okay. Using Gauss law, I want to find out field. Till now, using Gauss law, we calculated flux. So, flux there is no problem. You can substitute charge, simplify, you will get the flux. But there is a problem in extracting field from Gauss law. You cannot directly take this out, right. So, there are conditions required to take that E out of integration sign. So, if I simplify, I will get E mod ds mod cos whatever be the angle theta q divided by epsilon naught, right. This is ds. I can take this one out only when the magnitude of E is same at every ds, listen carefully at every point on the Gaussian surface, if magnitude of field is same, then I can take out provided everywhere the angle made by this E with D s is same. So, I require angle same, I require magnitude same, when these two conditions are met then only I can take E out, right, this is the requirement. So, in any situation you have to consider Gaussian surface in such a way, so that these two conditions are met, right.
So, in this case if I want to find out field here and I consider Gaussian surface this way, then you can see here you can see here if I take element over the Gaussian surface this is dA and electric field here radially outward will be like this. Similarly, if you take element somewhere here this is E and this is dA. So, everywhere on Gaussian surface field will be radially outward and area vector is also radially outward. The angle between these two is 0. So, here this cos 0 will become 1. So, this quantity is 1 for this Gaussian surface right. I can take E out and then you can see that I need to integrate the whole surface this side I have to write charge enclosed. So, how much charge will be enclosed by the surface if the radius of surfaces are density into density into here in place of charge I can write in place of this charge I can write rho into volume of this part 4 by 3 pi r cube by volume charge density is nothing but charge by volume. So, charge is volume charge density into volume right. So, here I, this side I can write rho into 4 by 3 pi r sorry small r small r cube divided by epsilon naught. Now, surface area is 4 pi r square. So, this side I can write E is equal to E into this one is 4 pi small r square is equal to rho into 4 by 3 pi r cube divided by epsilon naught. 4 pi r square 4 pi 4 pi will get cancelled out and you can see 1 r, 1 r will get cancelled out only r is left and I can see that we are getting E is equal to rho 1 r is left rho r upon 3 epsilon naught. This is what we have seen in electrostat right. So, field inside uniformly charged solid sphere used to come rho r upon 3 epsilon naught that we have proved using Gauss law. So, for those situation where we can easily consider the Gaussian surface so that our conditions are met we can easily calculate the field their procedure was little difficult. We considered spherical shell and we integrated for the spherical shell then we got the field here, but in one step you can see that you will get field. Similarly, if I take a long wire very long wire and I want to find out field from long wire at distance r. So, very long wire you visualize and I want to field find field at distance r. As wire is very long field will be everywhere perpendicular to the wire outward direction because charge is positive. Let the linear charge density is lambda right. Now, at distance r I want to find out field ok. So, what I can write E dot d s close is charge inside by epsilon naught Gauss law. Here you can see there are three surfaces one the top flat one bottom flat one and the side one is the curve one right. So, two flat surfaces let us call it surface one this I am calling surface one similarly here there will be surface two and this I am calling surface three. So, I can break this close in three parts I will do E dot d s for first surface then I will do E dot d s for second surface then E dot d s for third surface 
it is q in upon epsilon naught right now one by one 1 and 2 if you look at 1 because of the infinite wire because of the infinite straight wire we know that field lines will be like this perpendicular to the wire. So, if I place a flat surface over here if I place a flat surface over here then you can see that no line is crossing the flat surface because field lines are perpendicular to the wire if I take a flat surface no line will cross the surface lines will be parallel to the surface. So, here if I take a small element its area vector in this direction right this d s we are writing this d s in this direction and the field because of the wire at this particular point is in this direction the angle between them is 90 degree. So, here I need to write cos 90. Here I write cos 90. So, this will be cos 90 dot product cos 90, right. Same thing will happen for this bottom surface, lines will be like this, area vector in this direction, the angle made will be 90 degree. So, cos 90 cos 90 dot product uh, this will become 0, this will also become 0. So, these two will be 0 that means flux will be associated only with third one. How much flux is associated? If I take a small element over here you can see that area vector and field both are in same direction. Anywhere on this surface you take area vector field and area vector both will be in same direction. So, this can be written this can be written field will have same magnitude everywhere. So, I can write E mod outside dot product for this case cos 0 is 1. So, dot product cos 0 is 1. So, I just need to integrate surface area right and this side how much charge is enclosed if I assume that length of the cylinder is L length of that imaginary cylinder is L wire is going up to infinity, but the Gaussian surface what I have considered its length is L. So, how much charge will be inside? So, length of the wire which is inside will be L as the length of the cylinder is L. If I multiply to the linear charge density, I will get the charge enclosed. So, linear charge density if I multiply to the length of the wire enclosed by cylinder how much is the surface area? Radius is R periphery is 2 pi r and length is L. So, surface area is 2 pi r into L is equal to lambda L divided by epsilon naught right. This L this L gets cancelled out and what we finally get is lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught r L L got cancelled out this was the expression for electric field produced by infinite wire and in electrostat we got and how we got we took a small small elements and we added the contribution by all small element at that particular point to calculate the total field produced by the whole wire lengthy procedure apply Gauss law this is the answer. Right. So, this is the application of Gauss law. So, for such type of symmetrical distribution and all where you can easily predict the direction of field you can get the expression easily using Gauss law instead of considering element and adding the contribution of all the element and integrating this is a better procedure right. One more point here as I already told 
this is the field produced by all whether they are inside or outside. So, E is the field produced by all the charges whether they are inside the Gaussian surface or outside the Gaussian surface. That means, you are getting the net field at this particular point, but on other side you have to just write on other side you have to just write how much is the charge enclosed. So, this side though we are writing charge enclosed inside, but on other side we are getting field created by all the charges whether they are inside or outside. So, I hope this point is clear. Now, let us see another similar distribution. So, we have got infinite sheet and charge is distributed over sheet this way right and uh, I want to find out how much is the field in front of the sheet surface is surface charge distribution is there and say surface charge density here is sigma and charge is distributed only one side. We know the expression we derive it there in electric field and the expression was sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. Now, let us see whether we are getting same result or not. So, I know if field is very large sorry plate is very large. So, the field if so field created will be uniform and it will be perpendicular to the surface. So, this is two dimensional diagram I am drawing. So, we have got one big sheet and because of the sheet we are getting field lines perpendicular to the sheet that diagram is drawn this way over here. So, because of all these charges field lines will be perpendicular to the surface right and I want to find out the field. So, if I take Gaussian surface this way, if I take Gaussian surface So, this Gaussian surface I have taken this way like cylinder half part this side half part this side right. So, as we have just seen that the field pattern will be perpendicular to the plate like this, this side as well as on other side. So, this side also there will be field right. So, this diagram in two dimension is something like this. If I ask how much is the flux associated, you can see that if I take area somewhere here area vector, this area vector is making 90 with the field. So, at the curve surface if you take element the area vector is making 90 degree. So, flux associated E dot d s E dot d s this angle cos 90 if I write cos 90 if I write this value is 0. So, this whole value will be 0. So, there is no flux associated with this surface. I will call front one as first and the back one I am calling second. So, here 1 and this is 2. Now, so, flux is associated with this one and flux is associated with this one half I consider this side half I consider this side that means cylinder is passing through the sheet half outside and half on other side right. Now, let us apply Gauss law. So, let the area here is A field here is E. So, intensity E intensity E and the area is A. So, flux associated with this one as field I can see uniform E A because of this first surface and another E A will come because of second surface right this side surface E A 
and this side surface E both will contribute to positive flux and that is why plus and plus right. How much is the charge? If surface charge density is sigma, if surface charge density is sigma and this area visualize this area uh, here something like this you will get projection right. I hope you can visualize I will draw better diagram. What I am saying is this area, if this front one is A, if this one is A and it is passing through plate, that one will be A. If I multiply this area A to sigma, I will get the charge here. So, charge here will be sigma into A. So, sigma into A divided by epsilon naught Gauss law total flux is equal to charge inside upon epsilon naught. If you simplify A and A gets cancelled out and we can see that field what we are getting is sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. So, this will be the magnitude of field in front of this sheet right. So, we talk about the sphere, we talk about the infinite straight wire and we talk about the infinite sheet. We already calculated all these results in electric field using integration. Here we can avoid integration and apply Gauss law to directly get the answer. So, how simple it is if you remember the derivation of this one. We first derived the field due to ring and that we integrated to get the field due to disc and that we made radius infinity to get the sheet of infinite size. So, very long procedure. Here I just wrote one step, I just wrote Gauss law and in one step I got answer right. Only thing here you have to visualize how to take the element. Instead of taking element cylinder like this, visualize if I take some of you might, might be wondering why cylinder this way, why not cylinder this way. Let us see that also. So, I will erase all this. So, if this is sheet and uh, you want cylinder to be something like this, right, half this side and half inside, okay. Let us draw one more diagram for better clarity. So, I have taken cylinder like this. And we know that field created is exactly this way. Now, as field line visualize that there is a surface and field lines are like this, and you are taking cylindrical surface. So, if you are taking cylindrical surface, element here will have area vector in this direction, but the field is in this direction. So, different point on the cylindrical surface we are getting we are getting area vector and the field direction different. If area vector and field direction is different I already told you you cannot take the electric field out. So, if we take Gaussian surface something like this we cannot take the field out to get electric field. So, you have to be very careful while selecting the Gaussian surface you have to make sure that at every point on the Gaussian surface field is same and it is making same angle with the area vector then only you can take this one out right. So, I hope the requirement is clear and in what situation we apply Gauss law to get the answer easily that part is also clear. Now, let us see differential form of the Gauss law we have seen till now 
integral form of the Gauss law. So, let us take one example on differential form of the Gauss law. So, differential form is del dot E is equal to rho upon epsilon naught. I already told you, you need not to worry about what this del is. For time being, this del is d by dx i cap, d by dy j cap, d by dz k cap, dot product, dot product, then field in vector form that is rho upon epsilon naught, right? Where rho is volume charge density. So, question says, if the electric field intensity in a space is given by alpha x i plus y j plus z k, find the volume charge density in a space. So, instead of asking how much charge enclosed, the question is directly calculate volume charge density. And for all such type of cases where volume charge density is asked, best way to get this one is using this differential form, right. Q enclosed is asked e dot d s close surface integral is q in upon epsilon naught by that we will go. But in any situation if something like this is asked, what, is the, what would be the density and all, then this is the better procedure. So, if I substitute <coughs> the value of field here, this is alpha x i plus y j plus z k, right. This dot we need to do with this expression so i dot i will give you one this i and i i dot i will give you one j dot j will give you one and k dot k will give you one and here you can see that this x you have to differentiate with respect to x so partial differentiation of x with respect to x will give you one so you will get 1 over here plus. Similarly, for this, this one, you will get 1. Similarly, for this one, you will get 1. And this alpha I am taking out, alpha is outside, is equal to rho upon epsilon naught. Simplify, you have the volume charge density. So, rho is equal to what? 3 alpha epsilon naught. How easily we have solved the problem? Right. So, any way that function is given means uh, i component may have uh, or i component might be changing with x, y, z coordinate. Similarly, y, y component is changing with x, y, z coordinate. Only thing you need to do is the partial differentiation. So, any function whatever written here partially differentiate, whatever written here partially differentiate with respect to x, then partially differentiate with respect to y, this one whatever written, whatever written, partially differentiate, simplify. So, I hope application of Gauss law is clear and Gauss law's important points are completely clear. Now, let us move to next topic, there also we will be using Gauss law. So, our next topic is conductor, right. So, what basically the conductor is, you must have seen wires, right. So, inside we have metal, generally copper, which will be allowing charge to flow and outside it is wrapped with some insulating material, so that you will not experience shock, right. So, obviously this has to be insulating material. So, conductor and insulator, basic definition of conductor is some material allow electric charge to pass through them easily, right. So, those material which will allow charge to pass through them easily, those are called conductors, right. These are called conductors and in this chapter we will talk about conductors only. And other material which are not allowing the charge to move that easily, it is called insulator, right. So, other material do not allow electric charge to pass through them easily, these material are called insulator, right. What happens at molecule level, what happens uh, inside that we will see later, but for time being we are just interested in the broad definition of conductors, right. How energy levels will be there for insulator, conductor and semiconductor that we will see in last topic of semiconductor.
right but right now we are using broader definition for conductor that conductor allows charge to flow through them easily now properties of conductor <coughs> so electric field inside the conductor is zero under electrostatic condition right now we are talking about electrostatic condition in correct current electricity we will talk about electrodynamic condition so only in electrostatic condition where charges finally come to rest in that condition the field inside the conductor has to be zero right so statement is uh, when a conductor is placed in external electric field there will be there will be redistribution of charges in such a way so that the net field on conductor becomes zero that redistribution of charge is also called induction right so it says whenever a conductor is placed in external field the mobile electron free electron start drifting such that the net field inside the conductor at any point is precisely zero right this phenomena of redistribution of free electron is called induction now so first thing and the most important thing is electric field inside conductor under electrostatic condition has to be zero right let's see so i have got one conductor uh, it is not given any charge so uncharged conductor i am placing here in uniform external field so what will happen this field at any point you take this field will have effect inside the conductor this way right so if the field is having effect this way the charge inside start experiencing force and they start drifting they keep drifting till electrostatic condition is achieved and electrostatic condition is achieved when the net field at this particular point or any point inside the conductor becomes zero because if field is zero then there is no movement of free electron and condition will become electrostatic so what will happen when you apply field then there will be redistribution right so this field electron start drifting opposite to the field these electron start drifting opposite to the field and this side surface will have excess electron and this side surface will have deficiency of electron deficiency of electron we are drawing it by positive charge and excess of the electron we are drawing by negative charge i hope you are understanding when you apply field electron start experiencing force opposite to the field they start drifting this way and the positive charge as as there is excess of free electron this side there will be deficiency so this behaves as this part behaves as a positively charged and this part behaves as negatively charged so the movement keeps happening till the net field at that particular point becomes zero so any general point if i take net field become zero so body will acquire electrostatic condition as you apply the field movement starts it takes very small time for this redistribution to take place and finally when redistribution takes place it will take place in such a way so that it cancels the field this redistribution cancels the field produced by external agent so this charge this charge together in combination will produce field this way so that it cancels this field and the net field inside will become zero so this is the most important point when you place conductor in the field the redistribution will take place and that redistribution will be such that 
it will try to cancel the effect produced by the external agent or in this case external field right so this is the first point i hope it is clear so ultimately what we are getting field by external agent field by external agent field by induced charge they will cancel each other at this particular point and you are going to get net field zero right at every point on the conductor so these two in combination somewhere here so this external will produce field in this direction e not and these two in combination will produce field in this direction i am writing ep ep because it is representing polarization right so field produced by induced charge i am writing ep that ep and this e not will cancel each other at every point inside the conductor and net field you are going to get zero right so this is the first point instead of uh, placing conductor in external field if i place conductor in front of a point charge so as you can see that this point charge this point charge will try to produce field along the line joining right point charge will try to produce field in this direction so what will happen electron start drifting opposite to the direction of field and they keep drifting till their field at this point and the external field they will cancel each other right so <clears throat> so when you bring when you bring charge from infinity towards the surface when charge is at infinity no redistribution right and when you get the charge here immediately redistribution will take place this redistribution will be such a way so that the field produced by this point charge q and the field produced by the induced charge they will cancel each other so movement keep happening till till these charges balances the field produced by external agent so in this case i can write e produced by point charge plus field produced by induced charge at any point inside the conductor is always zero right so if i ask what is the field produced by induced charge a distance r from point charge right i ask what is the field produced by induced charge at the distance r at this point p so to get the field produced by induced charge because net has to be zero you can write field produced by induced charge direction opposite opposite to eq and the magnitude you can write it this way vector form right these all are in vector form so this we know kq divided by r square r cap in vector form due to point charge minus sign right so this much is the field produced by induced charge right so this is when i have a point charge and uncharged conductor if i have 
external field also. Now, I am saying that along with this external charge Q, I have this external field E naught. Now, everything is there, external field is there, point charge is there, we have got uncharged conductor and now I am asking what is happening at this point. So, this E naught will produce field this way this point charge will produce field this way. And this distribution will be such that at this particular point it will exactly cancel the resultant of these two. So, field produced by this and this will be something like this. So, now I can write E induced plus E because of Q plus E because of external, they all together will make field 0 inside conductor. I hope uh, this point is clear, net field inside conductor under electrostatic condition has to be 0, right. So, there are other points also that we will see in our next class. So, I hope you have enjoyed today's class, right. So, I suggest you to download assignment and start solving, right. So, thanks for watching.